to cross over? Did you get God's attention? If you didn't get touched, you didn't get his attention. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a wonderful day to die. <laughs> glory. And glory. Thank you, Master. Everyone say, why lack? Why do people lack? You know? I mean, we got all these reasons and so forth. Lack. Lack. Lack presence. Lack. That's why people lack. They lack understanding, right? They lack. There's so much lack. Let me tell you, the enemy wants to put you in a position of lack again. Even though you've had abundance, he wants to get you back to lack. There's many people in the world that lack. They lack physically, but more importantly, spiritually. Amen? Better to live in a cardboard box and not lack spiritually. But I can tell you if you're not lacking spiritually, you're not living in a cardboard box. Hello? <laughs> Glory. Hosea 4, verse 1. Hosea. Chapter 4, verse 1. Glory. Many people are living a, lack, a life of lack. And many Christians are living a life of lack. The Lord doesn't like lack. He wants his children to have life abundantly. Amen? But the, everything, is, you know, everything is in cooperation to come out of a life of lack. When we were living in the world, we lived a life of lack. The number one thing, I don't care how much money you had in the account, amen? We still live the life of lacking God's presence, lacking spiritual understanding, lacking. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1, let's read it. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. And that's what the enemy is trying to remove. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break all restraints. With bloodshed upon bloodshed, therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells there will waste away. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now, let no one contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with priests. Therefore you shall tr stumble in the day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in the night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Knowledge. That's spiritual understanding. And because you rejected the spiritual understanding, I will also reject you for being close to me as a priest. And because you've forgotten my ways and my laws. I will also forget your children. In other words, a curse will come down the family line. Amen? They more, they more, the more they increased, the more they sinned against me, he says. I will charge their, change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat but not have enough. In other words, they will live a life of lack. They shall commit adultery but not increase. Nothing will satisfy them. Because they have ceased obeying the Lord or the voice of the Lord. What does it say? Basically it says they live a life of lack because they 
Don't obey the Lord. His knowledge. Destruction will be the end result. Does everybody understand? Why lack? Why live a life of lack? Why go back into that life of lack? That's where the enemy wants to draw us every day. We battle that all the time. It's constantly around us. In Psalm 23, Everyone in this room has seen somebody go back to lack. Lack is also associated with laziness. People that are lazy will lack. Because they allow their emotions to dictate their choices or their decisions. Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my what? The Lord is my what? Shepherd, I shall not want. Well, if, you, if you're not in a place of want because you're not in a place of lack, you have everything. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Wow. He leaves me beside still waters. Again. So in this, he, Jesus must become the great shepherd to each and every one of us. No matter what. He is the great shepherd of your life. What he's asking for is the number one thing is he's the number one attraction. Anything else is a distraction. I'm going to say it again. If he's not your number one attraction, then any, everything else is a distraction. Amen? It says he leads us. He makes us lie down in green pastures and leads us beside still waters. Why? Because he leads us to eat and to drink of life eternal. He restores my soul. In other words, he converts our soul in righteousness. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. He, we have, he, the individual avoids any access of fear to them. They will not access. For you are with me. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, correction, conviction, and counsel will be a comfort, not an offense. I'm going to repeat all this, so we're going to go through it. Number five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, he anoints us with fresh oil. It says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup rinse oil. Anointing fresh oil and new wine from crossing over. It's called the crossover presence. Everyone say crossover presence. See, there's a presence and then there's a crossover presence. When there's a crossover presence, you get new wine and fresh oil, man. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, goodness and mercy all the days of our lives maintained by assembling. Everyone say assembling. The word says forsake not to assemble. Now again, I will repeat these. The Lord, number, number one, should be our great shepherd. He's the number one attraction. Anything else is a distraction. Number two, he leads us to eat and drink of life eternal. Number three is converting our soul in righteousness. He must be our great shepherd. He leads us to eat and drink life eternal. He converts our soul in righteousness. And we avoid any access of fear. In other words, we do not allow fear to access us. Amen? How many of y'all know fear is always trying to access us? Amen. Number five, we receive his correction, conviction, and counsel. We will, it will be a comfort to us, not an offense. He 
He says he rebukes those he loves. He chastens those he loves. So correction, conviction, and counsel will be a comfort, not an offense. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything. Number six, he anoints it with fresh oil and new wine from his crossover presence. And number seven, goodness and mercy will follow all the days, all the days of our life. Maintained by assembling. Why? Because in assembling you get refreshed with all of this again and over and over and over. We will not live a life of lack. We will live a life of abundance. In John chapter 10. You know, as I drive down the road, many times I see all these gorgeous mansions and all these hot cars in a driveway. And my first thought is always, not how they got it, but whether they're rescued, whether they're saved. Do they know Jesus? Are they in love with Jesus? Other than that, everything they have is in vain. People live a vain life. John chapter 10 and verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. That makes him a shepherd. And all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers. Well, that ought to tell us what's happening. Amen. Amen. But the sheep did not hear them. The sheep did not hear them. The sheep did not agree with the thieves and robbers. Does everybody understand that? I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that is the powers of darkness, the devil. But I have come that they may have life and life more abundantly. I am the good, the great shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good, great shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I also I might bring, I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up. This command I have received from my Father. The great shepherd came to bring us a life <laughs> with no lack. Amen? Life with no lack. He came to bring us abundance. But he gave us a set guidelines to follow in. We have come into a place right now in a season, which I, it's called a dissolving season of self. It's a dissolving season of self. It's to blend the body in one, one mind, one will, with multiple functions. One mind, 
one will and multiple functions to fulfill his will. One mind, one will, but multiple functions to fulfill his will. Again, we go back to self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is destruction. Self-centeredness can never fulfill the will of God. It only does partial. It's like working part-time. People only walk with God part-time. And not full-time. They use God to get, but they don't respond, return back. In Hebrews 13, Yes, we are in a dissolving season of self to bring unity to the body with one mind, one will, and to fulfill His will. Hebrew 13. In verse 20. Hallelujah. Uh, is everybody there? Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the what? The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you what? Complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ whom he be the glory forever and ever. So the great shepherd is working his will in us. The level of obedience is determined by the level of relationship. The level of relationship is determined by the level of worship. And I'm going to say that again. The level of obedience is determined by the level of relationship. And the level uh, and um, the level of relationship is determined by the level of your worship. Many will advance, but many will lack. Consistency is always a key of victory. Remember the Bible tells us the devil seeks whom he can devour. Amen? In James chapter 4. Everybody okay? Everybody get it? Am I moving too fast? Yes. Repeat that. The level of obedience is determined by the level of relationship. You need to learn Holy Ghost shorthand. See, Holy Ghost shorthand... <laughs> We'll write obedience, relationship, amen, and worship. There you are. <laughs> Three words. <laughs> Anyways, the level of obedience is determined by the level of relationship. The level of relationship is determined by the level of your worship. Many will advance and many will lack. Remember, there's a difference between presence and crossover presence. Amen? James 4. Can we move on? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone say glory. Glory. We don't grunt, we groan. <laughs> James 4 verse 1. God, is it hot in here? Hallelujah. Is everybody there? James 4, verse 50. I mean, uh, verse 1. 
Thank you, dear. That's helping. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask it amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures of the flesh. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hatred or enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. But he gives more grace, more of God's plan. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the what? Humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. But what do you got to first do? Submit to God. People are trying to get rid of the devil out of their life when they've never submitted to God. He says, draw near to God and he'll draw to, near to you. How do you do that? Worship. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. One foot in the world and one foot not. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Don't speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Therefore, the one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy, who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go do such and such a city and spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Lust. Lust is associated with a desire. It means want, more. People lust over things. It's because they don't have, so they're always wanting. People, you know, when you get, one of the things the devil loves to do is get you into a position where you're looking at what you don't have instead of being grateful what you have. That is an open door to the enemy. Do not compare yourself with others. Compare yourself with the Lord. He's able to do all things. Nothing's impossible. You know, one of the things that after I had gotten saved and the Lord was bringing me through, the, the main scripture he kept telling me, because I, I couldn't read and so forth, and he was training me to read. And he said to me, I, every time you come into a place where you struggle, I want you to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Every time I came into a place of something that was trying to stop or prevent me from moving forward, I would say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all of a sudden, something would happen. His divine intervention would come. His divine character would rise up. So lust is a, because people don't have. Pride seeks its own. Everyone say pride seeks its own. And lacks life eternal. But the submissive, humble, accept correction, counsel, always. And they're always waiting direction. That's how they get life abundantly. Amen. They're waiting for direction. Remember, when you don't know what to do, you don't do anything. You know, so many people want to know when. When, 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 when. That means you don't trust. When you don't trust. Don't tell me you have a relationship with the Lord when you can't trust Him. I just want to know when. I don't care. I don't have to know when. I know He's got it. Because I trust Him. See, whens are associated with religion. They take God's words and try to make it religious. Oh, Lord, you said when. Hello? If you don't know him, you don't trust him. If you don't trust him, you're always asking him when. 
Does everybody understand? That means there's a lack. Amen? There's a lack problem. And that's because it's self-centeredness. Because there's something you want. The I syndrome. Is it really pertaining to kingdom business? I mean, anybody can alter and trans, you know, do something. Well, yeah, it's kingdom business. Yeah, I need a $400,000 car. It's kingdom business, you know. I want it now. No trust. No relationship. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Psalm 40. Or it's what we call a part-time relationship. <laughs> I get questions all the time. When is this going to be done? When is this going to come? When is this... I usually tell them, when the Lord wills. I don't know. <laughs> Unless God tells you, then you express it. If you don't know, don't, don't assume. Psalm 40. Everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. I did what? I waited patiently. In other words, I endured. I pressed through my self-centeredness. For the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my what? Steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear, and will what? Trust the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his what? Trust. Blessed. Wow. That means prosperous. That means favor. That means no lack. If you're blessed, you ain't lacking. If you're cursed, you lack. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. And your law is within my heart. In other words, his words. Endure until an answer. Everyone say, I'm going to endure until an answer. See, this is what makes the Lord his, your shepherd. You know, he, it's coming. You don't have to know it right now. Amen. It's coming. Be patient. Endure. Why? Because you trust him. But the enemy is going to try to bring anxiousness. He's going to try to bring the want factor. He's going to try to bring the when factor. He's going to try to bring the how factor. Hello? You know, God gives us wisdom. The wisdom tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. But you must wait for it. If not, you'll do it in the flesh. And you'll always live a life of assumption and you'll live a life of lack. It doesn't mean that you won't have things. But there's a spiritual lack that you and I do not want to ever touch or go to. We want life and a life abundantly in the spirit. I don't care how many material things you have. That's irrelevant. It's where you are in the spirit. It's whether you're in a relationship with a crossover presence in the person and that you're in love with and that you wait for, you seek, and you grope after. He must be your attraction. And anything else is a distraction. Amen? And Psalm 34.
the words say, it says, those, the Father searches out, seeks out those who worship him in truth and spirit. He is the life giver. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. No. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. That supersedes everything. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. For if people would praise God more than their mouth, there would be less gossip. Every time they start to think about gossip, they're going, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 2, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. But you first had to what? Seek the Lord. He doesn't take mail or smoke signals. You must seek him face to face. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who what? Fear him, reverence him, honor him, and delivers them. That should be a sure factor of confidence in the Lord. So when the devil wants to mess with me, I just turn aside. you got to mess with him. Verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no what? Want or lack to those who reverence him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. That's his promise. That's to be sufficient. Amen? Whereas the fear of the Lord, there's no lack. Amen? Deuteronomy 28. So you can, you know, so when there's lack, you got to ask yourself, why lack? Why is there a lack? Why am I working my butt off and not getting anywhere? Why is, I, I carry a poor, pit, uh, a poor man's purse. Um, no matter what happens, no matter what I collect, just goes right through it. Spend, 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 and never gain. This is what we're talking about. People spend money on foolish things. Hey, I'm going to do it around me, 28, sorry. In verse 47. Oh, hallelujah. Look at this now. Is everybody there? Do it around me, 28, 47. It says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything. In other words, you didn't serve him with joy and gladness of heart. Of all the things that he's blessed you with. Grumble and complain still. Still looking at what you don't have. And think instead of thanking God of what you do have. Therefore you shall serve your enemies. Hello. Whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron around your neck until he has destroyed you. He snap. <laughs> so I would suggest everyone serve the Lord with gladness and joy. Amen. 
<laughs> Not serving the Lord with joy and gladness of the heart for all the abundant things he's given us will lose it. They will lose it. Their blessings will be turned into curses. Romans 8. Romans 8. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? That's why the word tells us don't be envious of those who prosper in their ways of wickedness. I don't care what's going on in the world, how much material. You must look be, uh, through all of these things. Because if they're not prosperous in the spirit with Christ Jesus, they're in trouble. You know, there should be a point where you will reach a point. I'm telling you, you will reach a point where you, will lack, you won't lack anything and you won't have to search for money. Money will search you out. Does everybody understand? Money will search you out. But if you refuse for money to search you out and you search money out, it won't search you out. God will hold it back. Listen, I, I know people that have, that whatever they touch just blesses and prospers. But because they're not money seekers, they're God seekers. The money seeks them out. If you'll just allow God to be God, amen, just allow him to be God. You know, we do our part, he does his part. He's already given us request to fulfill here. Amen? As we continue to fulfill those, then the promises are released. But if you're an individual that is money hungry, searching out money because you want materialism, you will lack. You'll buy lemons. And they become very sour. Hello. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Hello. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through flesh, God did by sending his own Son in likeness to sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned to sin in the flesh. So again, God had to take care of that. We couldn't. Amen? So there's a righteous requirement of the law that it would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So walk according to the Spirit. That means abundance of life in the Spirit. You won't lack anything. And whatever you lack is going to come. As long as you put kingdom business first. Amen? When you put kingdom business first, it changes everything. Hallelujah. For those who live according to the flesh, set their thoughts, their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, those are the ones who are going to prosper. But again, prosperity in the Spirit is priority. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. So then those who are in the flesh will not please the Lord. A life of flesh is a life of lack. It's a life spiritually and becomes physically. Why? Because the enemy will come and steal, kill, and destroy. You know, one of the things the devil does is he loves to prosper people who serve him wickedness. The higher wickedness they serve him, the more prosperous they are. Does everybody understand that? So never be deceived by somebody's prosperous, how many planes they owe, how, how many cars they owe, how many homes they owe. Never look there. Because that's all it is, is a deception from the enemy 
so that a person wants to become like that person to get wealth. Let me tell you, I had nothing. I was basically homeless. Lost everything. Had nothing. Nothing whatsoever. My friend was a Doberman dog. Loyal. Lost my wife, lost my children, lost everything. Lost home, lost cars, lost it all. Lost limousines, lost everything. Lost all my stashes of money. Lost everything. Of course, I couldn't remember where I put them anyways. Hallelujah. Lost it all. But when Christ came into my life, I was the richest man on the planet. I was fulfilled and rich. I had everything because I had him. I didn't need anything else. I had him. He was my fulfillment and still is. But all of the, all the things that he's blessed me with are not attractions. Because I give glory to him and everything that he gives. It's from him, not from me. I didn't work for that. He brought it. Never think that you worked for something. He brought it to you. He gave you the talents to gain it. Does everybody understand it? We labor unto the Lord, not unto self. Amen? Does everybody get it? Man, it's a great thing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 7, 21. Romans 7, 21. Oh, hallelujah. It says, then I find a law that is evil present with me. The one who wills to do good. I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, in my flesh, warring against the law of my mind and my thoughts, and trying to bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with my mind, my thoughts, I myself serve the law of God, His promises, His word. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So the old man of the flesh is attempting to bring down the new man of the spirit. We must always seek the mind of Christ for direction. Always seeking the mind of Christ for direction. In 2 Corinthians 6, what are we trying to do? Avoid a life of lack. Amen. Don't go to the phone, go to the throne. If the throne tells you to go to the phone, then you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 14. So here's a guideline for us, right? So that we don't fall into a place of lag. Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Hello. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? What communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? What power has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with it idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell with them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people. If they do something, if they come out from away among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't touch what is unclean. And I'll receive you. How many of y'all know a lie is unclean? Amen. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's a guideline. Come out from among them. Why? Because God doesn't want you to lack. He doesn't want the enemy to have access to steal. In Psalm 24, Another guideline. 
Aleluia. Verse 3. Verse 24. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. How many of y'all know we can be the idol? How many of y'all know your job can be an idol? Amen. How many know people can be an idol? Nor sworn deceitfully. How many know food can be an idol? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Abide in his presence with clean hands and a pure heart. Blessings, no lack, but abundance and favor. I'm going to close it. Psalm 18. How many of y'all know God loves to reward his children? In verse 20, let's speak it together. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. I kept myself from my iniquities. Therefore, the Lord has re recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show merc merciful. You will show yourself merciful. With the blameless, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down the haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against the troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the deer, feet of a deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bronze of bow, a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for battle and subdued under me those who rose up against me. You also have given me the necks of my enemies, so I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind, and I cast them out like dirt into the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of people who have made me the head of the nation. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise up against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord God, among the Gentiles, and I will sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king, to his children, and shows mercy to his anointed. 
This is David and his house and his descendants and everyone who follows the Lord. Amen. He rewards us according to our righteousness and clean hands. But there's something he requires, that you pursue your enemy and destroy him. Amen. That means that we must be freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. You know what's hindering you. You know what attacks you. Chase it. Destroy it. And don't let it rise up anymore. Amen. God will give you the victory. Why? Because he knows if he can you chase your enemy and destroy it, he can trust you. That way when he gives you blessings, you're not gonna, he's not going to allow the enemy, you're not going to allow the enemy to come and steal you, steal from you by misleading you or misdirecting you. You will always wait on the Lord. Not an assumption. Assumption is a killer. It is a destroyer. Never move in assumption. You move in faith. Faith means you hear, then you do. Amen? We don't want to live a life of lack. Not even a part-time life of lack. We want to live a life of full-time blessings and abundance, spiritually and physically. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Seal us today. and Seal your seed of righteousness that we may obey your word. In Jesus' name.